In evading Nilfgaard's banners, Meave led her force into Angren's wildest reaches. The foe could not attack the Lyrians there, yet hazards of another sort befell them. One day, they reached a quagmire too vast and deep to ford. So the queen summoned her engineer, Xavier, and called on him to build a makeshift bridge. By nightfall, he had drawn up plans. We shall start by laying abutments, then drive piles into the mire. Hmm. The depth? We dropped plumb lines. Four elves. Consumed by the plans, Meave did not see as Xavier slipped a line off his shoulder. By the time she felt it on her throat, she feared it might be too late. I long awaited this moment, when we would be alone. You die now, Majesty, and with you dies Lyrius, Rivius, the whole North will to resist. Hail, Ketzer, hail! What died was the Nilfgaardian rallying cry in Xavier's throat. At the last instant, Gascon and Reynard rushed in to save the warrior queen and thus proved their loyalty beyond any doubt. Your Grace! Your Grace! There was no answer, but Reynard could hear her breathe. Meave would live. It was several hours later when Meave finally came to. She opened her eyes, then Gascon and Reynard helped her to her feet. Careful, Your Majesty. I should have been more careful earlier. Damn it. If you two hadn't... No need for words. You needn't mention it. I couldn't disagree more. We're due for a long conversation. First of all, I owe you thanks. Second, my trust in you both has been heavily tarnished. I believe that goes without saying. Yet today you proved beyond all doubt that I can rely on you, so I thank you. To serve under your banner, Majesty, it is an honor. Likely I'd have put it differently, but Reynard seems to have the right idea. Very well. We've reassured ourselves of admiration for one another enough. We've matters to which we must attend. I trust as I lay there, dead to the world, you did not sit about with your thumbs up your bums. Have you at least learned why Xavier betrayed us, sided with the Empire? In a manner of speaking, yes. Your Grace, the rogue who lunged at you, in truth, was one Gwalta Ep Luinoch, a Nilfgaardian spy. Just a moment, that makes no sense. He saved my life in Mahakam, on the bridge. He did. For he had to. In one of the letters we found, Ep Dahi orders Gwalter to watch over Elder in Chief Hoog. The Skoyatel in the mountains was sent there by Nilfgaard to recruit dwarves, but their commander, the Vixen, they feared she'd attack Bruva himself, something Ep Dahi wished to avoid. Naturally. For someone else could seize power, someone not so neutrally inclined. Someone more likely to aid me, gods forbid. This discovery you made how? We found in his toolbox a concealed compartment, letters inside. Though encrypted, we managed to decipher them. They were the Grey Rider for you to read. A swine. An Imperial spy in my ranks this whole time. But to wait so long to strike, why? He'd only just received the order. Another letter in the box signed by General Eb Dahi stated, To Gwalter Eb Luinoch. Eliminate M at first opportunity. Honorless bastards. They'll stop at Nout. Now, Meave, you'll gain Nout by getting riled. No sense to it. This is good news, in fact. Is that so? Think. Ep Dahi had a spy in our midst. He knew our movements, had his eye on us, his finger on the pulse. He knew our plans, who we parlayed with, and yet he didn't order your assassination. For you pose no threat. Well, clearly so much changed. Congratulations. Nilfgaard fears you now. 
and rightly so. But we found him in the rubble at Rosberg, midst the ashes. Precisely what placed him beyond suspicion. We suspect Walter enlisted with the Adanians some years past, infiltrated that army. He had a hand in Rosberg's defence. Then, when the time was right, he lent that same hand to its demise. It caused an explosion that tore a hole through its walls. It worked, but at a price. He suffered severe burns. If not for our medics, he'd have... Stop. So it was not elves who brought about the fort's fall, as he claimed. A filthy lie to stoke the fires of racial hatred. To stir conflict and chaos and rage that would make the realm of Edurn waver and fall. If we're to judge by Rayla's actions, he was rather successful. Bastard. Yet even so badly hurt in such pain, not for a moment did he drop his mama's act. I've heard much of Nilfgaardian spies, Your Grace. They're trained from childhood, face constant indoctrination. They do anything for the Emperor, anything and everything. As soon as Gwalter spotted a chance to join our ranks, to be at your side, he took it, exploited it ably. To be brief, I've traitors all about me. Your Grace, you resent our actions, I understand, but... You, Willem, the Cad Coldwell, Gascon, Gabor, finally Xavier. Tell me how. How am I to trust anyone? You can't. Amongst all the realms in the north, you're Nilfgaard's sole rival. One remaining threat. All other rulers, either soundly defeated and enchained, or tails tween their legs, they've donned Nilfgaard's leash. The Black Clads will do all to destroy you, if not upon the field, then in secret, with an assassin and a quick, sharp blade. What's left? Prayer. Melitale too is sure to turn and take Nilfgaardian gold sooner or later. Ugh. We've talked enough. We must form up. Move on. Majesty, you ought to rest. Your stand swaying. Your step can't be too sure. Only my horse needs step true. Maeve, you've just about had the life chopped out of you. No time to play the hero. I'm not, Gascon. Quite the opposite, actually. These damn swamps, they terrify me. I wish to get the hell out and never, ever look back. The Aruga lies near. I sent scouts ahead. They've secured a barge. We can sail to Red Lobindon. Splendid. Sound the horns. We march. <laughs>